Hey everybody, it's Lee with Arbor Now. Uh, we're gonna be talking about Japanese maples today. Now, this is one tree that we get a lot of questions about. People are really concerned about how to trim them, and they should be. They're finicky trees, in the sense that you don't wanna make large cuts to their tips as much as possible. They have a natural form, and they should be planted where they're gonna do well with that basic shape in mind. Now, with this, we're gonna go through and talk about a couple of things. One of the things that's really important whenever you go from one Japanese maple to another because they have a lot of diseases is cleaning your tools. So here I'm going to use a silky handsaw. I think silky makes a really excellent quality saw and I'm going to clean out all of the teeth. This is just a basic uh, cleaning wipe from your average Costco just something that kills bacteria and viruses that's really all we're going for and then once I get her cleaned off I'm gonna use this to get into some of major cuts so the first step is look at the form of the tree and if there's any bigger branches that need to be taken out do those first bigger branches for the very first thing so the center branch here is being crowded out by the rest of the canopy the way it's growing off the parent limb it's it's not in a very good spot so I'm gonna remove this one and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the cut that you should do. So here I finished the cut. I'll let you guys get in here close and take a look. So right here, I finished the cut just a little bit outside the branch collar. So it's a nice clean cut with a nice sharp tool and that will heal over properly. Now let's look at some cuts done by a customer in the past and we see these stubs hanging off. All that will happen is this internal wood will rot back and eventually form a cup, especially on the top sections of the, of the branch. So when that finally breaks off, there'll be a little cup where the tissue could not heal around completely. It couldn't close off this wound. So there'll be a little cup left over. Go through anytime you see this and fix all of these cuts and cut them all appropriately. If you do that, they'll still continue to heal most of the time. And if not, uh, you can see I just cut into the healing tissue just a little bit. Let's see that life right there, that green tissue. That's what we're going for. I'm trying not to cut into that, but if you do a little bit, it won't kill it. And it'll actually promote healing sometimes. So it's just uh, depends on your opinion about the science. But then there's a large stub on this side. And again, this one will cause considerable problems. If you work your way around the tree over on this side, you'll be able to see it better. You see here, the tree tried to callus over, and that's these lumpy sections on both sides. The tree tried to callus over, but this stub being left behind, it couldn't seal over the wound. So what you end up with is a large cavity that will that'll continue to uh, widen as the tree tries to callus over it. So I'm gonna try and get in there and get it cut back as close as I can without damaging the new tissue too much. And we'll look at an example of a, a branch that was cut appropriately. So I've got that back in there a little bit better and hopefully that'll start to seal off. And I'm gonna go through and fix up any of these other missed cuts. But here's a good example. If you look right here, you can see there was a branch here in the past. This one was probably left to stub out. There's a little bit of a hole there, but it's almost completely healed over. And that's what you're going for. If you leave a stub, it can't heal over properly. And in the future, it'll cause a section to be readily available for water damage or insect damage. Insects will climb in there to remove that rotted wood and they'll expose it to more of the elements. So I've got out the major sections with my big saw. Those were all my big cuts. Actually, I actually have one more here. And this is just a crossing branch. And now I'm looking, see, if you saw where that was, if you look at the branches, it's growing too close together. So I took this out and now there's more room for the branches to spread out and get a little thicker and have more leaves. This branch is the same way. If you look up in here, uh, without looking at the sun, there is places where it's just too close and too congested these other uh, the other side. And we have the hedge behind us. 
So I'm gonna try and promote growth upwards on the backside as much as possible and take off all the sections that are growing inappropriately. This one I think can be fixed, but the cut would have to happen back here. And because I know that that won't look very good in the future, it'll just be better to remove this branch altogether. So normally the best way to cut, especially if it's a heavy limb, is to cut out away from your finish cut with your drop cut. So this outer cut here would drop the weight of the branch and then it'd be easy for me to maintain the cut. Otherwise, if this is really heavy, as I'm cutting through it, it could pull the bark down and cause a serious problem for the tree healing. So I'm just gonna go real gentle right here. I'm holding onto the branch. It's a light branch so I can control it. And I want a nice clean cut with no flags and no tears. And I wanna point out something that I just noticed. Um, if I can find them again, I saw some black ants climbing on the trunk of the tree. This is something to look out for. If I see one again, I'll point it out, but black ants, especially the small ones, if they're on the tree, they're usually promoting the aphids that will eventually hurt your tree in the summertime. They'll actually transport aphids to fresh leaves in order to get them to start growing so they can harvest the honeydew off of their abdomens. And that's something to look out for. If you have an aphid infestation and you see any small black ants moving up and down your trunk, the best thing you can do to start curing your issue is to put out some bait for the ants at the very base of the tree. And that will take care of the problem rather quickly. The ants will take that bait home. A good one to use for a lot of people is the tarot ant bait traps. <laughs> but that's not usually taken back to the queen. So there's actually some better ones out there, but that's one of the ones you'll see most people having access to and it works fine. It'll definitely slow them down. All right, so I'm pretty much done with all of my big cuts. Now I'm gonna get in with my Extension loppers, I'm going to be using some made by Fiskars. These are great little loppers. You can adjust the angle of the cut, which is really important sometimes. I'm just going to clean off all of the cutting area with my disinfectant wipes. Now when I get in here, first I'm going to remove any stubs that I see. And sometimes just a gentle tap will pop them off. But up in here, I've got some crossing branches. There's one, there's one that grows back over the center. Let me take it off as well. Here's a stub that looks pretty bad. We'll take that off. There's a few more. And right up in here, another one that crosses back over the center. These two are touching, and this one has quite a broom of branches. So I'll remove this one. Now I've created some space in between here. We still have this one right here that's touching the other portions of the canopy. I want to remove that. We have one here that grows up into the other section. We'll take him off as well. And you can see what we're really going for is space in between the branches. So if the foliage like right here where you can see the end of my tool is touching and growing past each other. That's a little too congested, so we'll, we'll remove some of the branches. We don't need to remove them all, but we're just gonna take out every other one on each side, and that will produce enough space. The branches have air room in between them that'll keep molds from forming up inside, and some fungal diseases, it'll keep them at bay. If more ultraviolet light can enter the canopy, it'll keep a lot of different diseases from being able to take root, so to speak. All right, well, that's the majority of what we're gonna do. I'm still gonna be in here fine tuning. I'm not real happy with this branch right here, but it's doing rather well, and there is space for it to grow up into the center. So I'm going to leave it this year, but I would more than likely remove this branch and just open up the center completely. And so this is the science of guesswork when it comes to tree work, is you never know exactly how the tree's gonna respond, but you have a pretty good idea based on 
the years of experience you have just trimming them and seeing how things respond afterwards. And I know this one probably won't be an issue for at least three or four years. So I'm going to leave it and let it grow in there and it might actually create some neat form up inside the tree. Well, that's enough for now. I'll check back in with you guys if I have anything interesting to talk about.